Welcome to our Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We're combining those two days uh, in one podcast because we're looking at the same chapter, uh, Luke chapter 2, of course. Uh, we know that we're in the year of Matthew and we, uh, we will be in Matthew the rest of of this uh, of this year of this liturgical year, uh, but we uh, we can't uh, not read uh, Luke chapter two on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So uh, this year, twenty twenty two, of course, uh, Christmas Day falls on a Sunday. Um, so it's probably more likely than not, or or more churches. I'll put it this way: more churches will have a Christmas Day service. Um, on December 25th uh, than uh, on uh, usual because it's a Sunday. So again, uh, as we said for the last podcast, if you choose to preach on something else on Christmas Day, you are certainly very welcome to do that. Of course, in the Revised Common Lectionary, the uh, the reading on Christmas Day uh, is normally John 1. Um, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So obviously you are welcome to uh, preach on that on Christmas day. We're suggesting Luke chapter two, uh, the first uh, say 14 verses on Christmas Eve uh, and then starting in verse eight uh, to the end of the chapter uh, on Christmas day itself. Uh, Again, you are welcome to divide this however you like, but let's uh, let's consider Luke chapter two as a whole uh, this is um, one of those texts that uh, may suffer from overfamiliarity. Of course, uh, it's well beloved. Uh, you have uh, the beginning in those days. A decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. Uh, I, I'm reading the NRSV, but uh, the KJV, the King James version, is echoing in my head because yeah. that's what I memorized uh, at. Uh, many, many Christmas programs growing up, uh, we would, I recall, stand in a line, all the Sunday school children, uh, and we would pass the microphone down and each of us would have uh, a sentence to say, uh, and we would, we would speak from memory these, uh, these verses, at least through verse 20, where the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for the, all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. So what is it in this year's reading uh, uh, of this familiar text uh, that most strikes uh, each of you? Um, The first thing is, it's not a profound uh, new thought. It's, but it starts, you know, you're starting off in Rome in the picture. And so you're, this is the Roman Empire, and uh, the most powerful person is there, Caesar Augustus. In those days, the decree went out from Caesar Augustus. That's in Rome. And then it, then it, you kind of go to the region and Quir- where Quirinius was governor of Syria. And then you go you know, into uh, Nazareth and Galilee and Bethlehem. And then finally, you end up out in a field. Uh, and I really like... Um, imagining taking listeners on that journey um, that, so that out out that God's revelation uh, here doesn't take place in the in the in the houses or the halls of the houses of power but it takes place right out there uh, in 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 the field and then they go of course and they they find the baby and they marvel at it but that's what I'm thinking what about you joy yeah, yeah, I really appreciate that. Uh, similarly, um, uh, as uh, the commentary says, we've cleaned this up. And so even though there are, are songs and scenes that ring through our minds, sort of like the sound of music every year, we've got to, we've got to do Luke, right? We've got to, we've got to rehearse this particular telling of uh, the birth story. And, but if we don't clean it up, if we take a different perspective as the journey that you you've just suggested, Ralph, Uh, we recognize that uh, one of the things that uh, we've often liked to do is to tell the story where we uh, have these poor peasants responding to outlandish expectations of the Roman Empire that overburdens every home in the community 
And we tell the story as a nice little birth by a fireplace next to puppies and sheep. <laughs> and that's not the story. The story is this is a people who are uh, taxed and burdened. And um, th this is the end of the exile. If we, we put this back in um, its, its historical context for ancient Israel. And uh, so there's, uh, there's no hotel. I, I, I know that this might be uh, ruining some people's expectations of no room at the inn, but there's no hotels. Uh, fun fact, hotels were started in the 18th century. So about 250, 255 years ago. And um, so there, there's no hotel. This is a people who really care about hospitality. That's, that's one of the signs of the promise of God, the God that is with us, uh, is hospitality, what it means for us to have table together. So they're not going to abandon a member of the family who's close to birth, except for the empire has set them up where they can't live the way that they want to live everybody's come to town. And so they do the next hospitable thing. They set her up. They set them up in the stable where, where the barns are. They're still on family property. They're still with the family. They're just out where the most difficult moment in the most difficult season of a young woman's life, giving birth, is about to take place. And if that doesn't set you up to realize God is with us, that she survived that birth. That That's a powerful moment. And I think that's a wonderful way to enter into the whole story of how God just surprisingly shows up, which we'll get to when we look at God's shining in the stars for the, uh, for the shepherds. I, uh, that's both uh, really good insights there. I, I note uh, the, the message to the shepherds here, right? To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah uh, in Hebrew, Mashiach, or in Greek, Christos, uh, the Lord. So uh, I think we mentioned this, I think it was in last week's podcast or maybe the intro to Matthew, but uh, this is the fulfillment of that promise to David all the way back in 2 Samuel 7. So Christos in, in Greek is the same word as Messiah or Mashiach in Hebrew, the anointed one, the okay. savior who is expected. And that the peace is for all. It is a peace that is uh, among all those whom God favors. So from the very beginning of Matthew, we learn that God's promise is for all the world. So, of course, it would be a star in the sky. Of course, it would move, as Ralph taught us, uh, told us, it would move from a home, a single people, out into a field. I love that imagery. I think that I appreciated what you said, Joy, about the empire, right, and the, <clears throat> and the oppression of the empire, right, that this is not how anyone... <laughs> would choose to have their first child or any child, right? Uh, out uh, um, uh, in the, in the, where the livestock are, are housed. But it strikes me too, that when the heavenly host appeared to the shepherds, right? Suddenly there was with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on, on earth, peace among those whom he favors. There's, there's a kind of uh, revelation of a power greater than empire here, yes. uh, you know, with the <clears throat> the heavenly host, right? The heavenly army um, singing praise to God, uh, glory to God in the highest heaven. Uh, so even though the empire, the earthly empire, the Roman empire uh, has made things difficult and, and uh, you know, their uh, op oppression, is the context for this story, uh, the revelation to the shepherds, and then of course to Mary and Joseph as well, the revelation is that that is not the true empire or not the most powerful empire, right? That, that God's kingdom breaks into uh, this earthly empire, uh, not with, 
you know, not with violence, uh, no. not with, uh, not with turning the earth upside down, not with military might, but God's kingdom breaks into this context with singing, <laughs> right? Uh, with joyful song, uh, and with praise, uh, to God. I think that's so just he- such a beautiful, um, image of what Christmas is, right? It's not a, a, a simplistic or um, sentimental kind of uh, uh, children singing, you know, Christmas carols. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a radical kind of breaking in of God's kingdom into a world that does not expect it and, um, and, and into a world where earthly powers are overturned uh, by the kingdom of God's uh, breaking in. I love the echo that you bring uh, or what came to mind as you were speaking, uh, Catherine, because I was thinking of uh, when Jehoshaphat, uh, King Jehoshaphat didn't know what to do. And he turned to rehearse what God had done in his prayer. We, we don't know what to do right now, but we know what you've done and been in the past. And what is the response? Praise. And so it, it's almost as if that's being lived out again here, that in the midst of not knowing what to do then and for us today, in the midst of what seems to be um, power out of our hands, God is still faithful to show up and to bring us to a place where we can sing those songs of hope. I, I have to I have to admit that my favorite um Christmas song and and is is the uh and and story is the little drummer boy and um I just love that dum 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 I just that 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 just came to mind as you as you were speaking and so it in that one the simplicity of the least expected child doing something that is a sign for some cultures of communication, God is still speaking to us, God's promise to be with us. You, you, uh, I, I have two last things to say uh, in response to what I told you, but I do think that it, that's, I really love, of course, uh, I love the story of the little drummer boy in the song, but uh, yeah, the idea that this is what a woman who's just given birth to a, a baby needs is somebody to, some kid to come in and start playing a snare drum is, is kind of fun. <laughs> but, uh, up yeah, story, not, right? not, what, not what I would choose in the hospital yeah, room after giving exactly. birth. Um, so here's just an echo to play with for preachers. You're not going to probably want to do anything with this in a sermon, but King David uh, also, um, Jesus ancestor or the messianic father uh, of the line. Um, he also had a census at, which displeased God and was the cause then of a plague. And I, I just wonder about the echoes that here's an, another emperor uh, announcing a, uh, a census, but God this time, rather than responding with a plague responds with the birth of the savior. I just, I, I, I don't know what else to do with that, but I love it. Um, and then just, there, there's, there does, there also just seems to be echoes of the Easter story in here, uh, in the fact that all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And amazement uh, is one of the react, uh, one that same Greek word is one of the words that you get in the in the various gospels uh, in response uh, to, to the announcement of the resurrection. So you've, uh, you know, you got the these. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I guess, you know, bookends uh, yeah. of, of uh, God's interrupting human history, interrupting life by becoming human and interrupting death by overcoming it.